Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a quick look at a brand new 2023 Riverstone Legacy Edition 45 bath toy hauler. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside and outside of this RV. Then we'll close it up at the end and show you what it looks like closed as well. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are up inside the brand new 2023 Riverstone Legacy Edition 45BATH. I'll let you kind of figure out what the lettering means there. So this is their first full toy hauler version. We're going to start back here in the back section. So looking at this back section right here, starting off, we have a three season door instead of a traditional wall inside of here. So you can fully open this up. You can close off the glass, leave the screens down, just kind of like you would in the back three season wall you're used to seeing. So stepping back here, you can see the black rubber diamond plate floor. You have quite a few D rings in the floor, some metal diamond plate along the bottom. And looking up top here, this is a little different. We have a U shape dinette kind of set up here and it's on the happy Jack bed system. This will come down. You'll see that here shortly. Over here, you can also see a Polk audio stereo head here, and you got a three speakers, basically two speakers and a subwoofer back here, but this has FM, uh, also has Bluetooth and XM satellite radio you can subscribe to, electric outlet, USB charger port here. Now you'll notice three large windows back here that are kind of a traditional RV window uh, setup, but these have the nicer day and night roller shades here. So you got your day shade pulling down, night shade as well. Uh, a lot of brands in the toy hauler area put more of a cloth blackout type of shade back here, but here they're trying to keep it residential as they're not just expecting you to use this as a toy hauler area. Here on the wall, we have the rear bed up and down system with a key, and we also have the uh, dinette up and down button as well. Really nice setup back here for hauling your toys or still using it as a livable space. This uh, does have a roll-up carpet that comes with it, so once your toy's out, you could still roll up and down the carpet area to give it a little more plush feel. You can see again, three season door back here, and this setup again will open or slide closed, swing open to get your toys in and out. Uh, again, you have the screen part or the glass part to keep your heat and stuff in, your air in. Your main entry door here is a little bit wider. They're roughly 32 inch wide doors. Also has the night shade in the pull down window area here. Uh, still traditional screen door and stuff as well. Over here on the right side, we have the up and or in and out button for the rear awning along with the light switch. The floor back here does kind of beaver tail down, so it's got that slope to make it easier to get in and out. We have it set up in patio mode right now. This is a really nice heavy duty patio rail system here, standing on the more ride zero g door really nice and easy to put up and down you can kind of see here the gerard power awning has the metal protective wrap led light also built into it as well uh, just overall a little higher quality stuff here and you have a set of steps down here that goes off the side of the back porch area here. You'll see this a little better when we go uh, down to the ground and kind of walk around. But there's a little latch that latches on here. This slides across. Then it just slides open, making it nice and easy for you to get in and out of there. And with it going off the side, it doesn't add any necessarily extra length to the RV like the entry exit area out the back. So a little bit nicer here. It just slides back across. This is the More Ride Zero G ramp door. So it's really nice and easy to put up and down. You've probably seen uh, one of my other Riverstone videos on their other toy hauler models that I've done. 
And those models like the 37 FLTH and the 42 FSKG, they also have the zero ramp G door. The latch system works a little differently because this is a bigger door here, but same basic premise as what I showed you in those videos. Now going on back up into this section here, just kind of get you an idea what it looks like from here. So right up top here, this is a bed that's going to come down. And again, we have our dinette area that's going to come down. So let's lower those down for you and show you what this all looks like here real quick. So we're going to do the bed first. You do have a key on and off so that you can control it. But this bed comes right on down out of the ceiling area here. There is a little ladder that comes with it as well so that you can climb up there a little bit easier. But I got the little ladder right here. Kind of see, you know, the way it's kind of set up here. It's a little bit fancier bed than what you find in the traditional toy hauler. And then the ladder actually just kind of hooks on to the side here. Now, you also are going to have this dinette section right here that's going to come down. So just kind of a quick look at this. This part comes down traditionally kind of like the Happy Jack bed system you find in most toy haulers. Because that's basically what it is. It is a Happy Jack system that runs up and down. They just did a little different setup as far as making it a U-shaped dinette setup for us. The sofas here will actually fold down against the wall. So if you need extra height when you are loading your toy in, you can just flip them down against the wall to gain a little extra height. That part all pretty much works just like the regular Happy Jack bed systems. You have a little cup holder on each corner there. The back cushions are also removable, so you can take them off, kind of maneuver things around a little bit if you need to. Now looking up at our ceiling here, you can see you know, AC ducts up there. Also AC returns for that Whisper Quiet air conditioner. They do, in my opinion, use a nicer, quieter air conditioner than most other brands. You don't see that big square in your roof area, so it's a little easier to talk and conversate. So up here, you know, you're sitting down here at your dinette area, you got a TV up there, or if you're laying in the bed, you have a TV up there again, Jensen Smart TV they're currently using. And you also have the speakers up there and a little subwoofer over on the bottom for this rear stereo system. And it just takes a few seconds to run those back up out of the way if you want to. All right, so stepping forward into this area. Oh, forgot to mention again, these do open. Um, usually I show you this, but I got too much stuff in the way now. There is a little latch you pull, which releases it and then swings the door open. But I have other stuff in the way down here as far as the two uh, pushback reclining uh, outside chairs that come with it as well. Sofa over here on up into the more luxurious side of the RV here. So we have a slide out sofa area. This sofa has light up cup holders on each side and a little removable table on each side that you can pop out. And this basically just comes out. It goes down into this little device here. You have heat and massage and lights as well. And it puts a little LED light strip along the bottom. And again, this little rod just goes right back into that, giving you a little cup holder area. This part of the sofa also folds down and there is a little electric outlet and USB charger port there, some more cup holders there as well. And the two ends recline, has a manual reclining theater seat there. Now directly across from this theater seat here, give you an idea what it looks like here sitting down, you have your Samsung Smart TV there as well. 
electric fireplace, which is basically a fancy electric space heater. So right now I just have the light part on, giving us that flame look. But you can also turn on the electric heat as well, separately if you want. There is a JBL sound bar just below the TV also. There's an electric outlet on the side of your island and a little heat duct down there as well. Now behind this TV, this actually opens. They call it a Murphy Pantry. It has a motion light in here. Let's see if we can step back here so you can see this a little better. But you have a lot of storage space back here for whatever you want to cram back there. There's also a subwoofer down there and your uh, cable and satellite outlets along with an electric outlet down there as well. But lots of room here to put some goodies. It has a magnetic holder. You'll hear that click in. Kind of pulls everything back. And then there is a travel lock that slides across. You got to open this door and slide it across to lock it. Now behind those middle doors there, you have kind of a pantry area. There's three drawers at the bottom and some more pantry space as well. Over here we have our Samsung refrigerator, the freezer on bottom, refrigerator on top. The freezer does have an ice maker in it. They also offer a 12 volt refrigerator as well that you can order it with it, but that one does not have an ice maker. And there's a little bit of storage above as well. So pretty nice little setup here. Now down here we have our dishwasher, a trash can area, along with a uh, little flip down sponge holder as well. You have the high rise spring sprayer faucet, I'm sorry, high rise faucet. They went to a sprayer faucet but it doesn't have the spring part anymore and I'm just too used to saying it. So they do have a little cutting board area here or sink covers and you have a dual sink area here as well. The one on the left is a little bit larger than the one on the right. Now looking over at the stove area here, we have the very large Insignia stove. So you have two drawers on the left, some storage space on the right, glass stove front, little light up knob, uh, little lights above your knobs there. You can turn those on and off individually. Some counter space on each side and four burner gas cooktop as well. So this is a propane based oven system. Looking up, we have quite a bit of cabinet space around our microwave. So traditional microwave, 110 electric, or you can also get it with a convection oven depending on which way you want to order it. So that would allow you to cook electronically or microwave either one. There is turbo exhaust fan controls, electric outlet there. Down on the side of the cabinet is your propane leak detector. So let's step back here real quick and just kind of look down our ceiling area here. So we have a 110 volt ceiling fan. This is a little different than what you're used to seeing in some older models. They did change up the ceiling fan and the control for it on the wall will be a little different. That infinity light again. And you also have AC ducts coming out and AC returns up there again for that whisper quiet AC system. There's electric outlet with USB charger port here. Now again, they're using those day night roller shades in here, but also notice the nice window framework and stuff as well. You actually have some window frames here and that is due to the fact that their walls are roughly three and a quarter inches thick where a traditional RV is usually two inches or inch and a half thick. So we have thicker, better insulated sidewalls here on the Riverstone. They are aluminum studded, fiberglass exterior, hung wall, and you have aluminum roof studs and floor studs. You have 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor and half inch plywood roof decking. 
So again, they are using a little bit thicker floor system and roof decking system as well, where a lot of brands are just using 3 8 There is a little step area here to get you up to the bathroom bedroom area. So you got step lights and a drawer down here as well. Your main entry exit door here, you got your fire extinguisher here. There is the ceiling fan controls here, and these are little light controls. So the ones with the up and down arrows, you can dim those lights, and they're just little soft touch lights to turn them on and off. And that's all tied into your Firefly system as well. Again, you got that shade in that window there. Grab handle to help you get up and down the steps. There is some controls here. We'll go over this, but behind this little cabinet, your Firefly system with a lot of the controls, the brain box for the RV. And you got your Truma on-demand water heater and the inverter on-off button. We'll go over that a little bit better when we come back in. And I did forget to mention on this unit, it was ordered with the four camera system and it comes with this seven inch screen this is a really nice safety feature for driving down the road but you can also buy an electric adapter for that uh, and use it to plug in and here and still see what's going on around your rv when you're camping too this right here is the tire pressure monitoring system control you have six wheels on this you'll see when we get outside and they all have tire pressure monitors built in so you know what's happening when you're driving down the road again nice safety feature whole house water filtration system as well. Window in your hallway area here. This window does open. And again, these are dual pane safety glass windows in the RV. So you have two layers of glass instead of just a single layer. So that helps a little bit with sound deadening and also a little bit of possibly insulation factor for cold and heat transfer, condensation kind of thing. So let's start from the top down here in our bathroom area. So we have a turbo exhaust fan here. We have a large skylight up there. You can see you do have an adjustable shower bar. Nice little bathroom shower wall area here. You got a sit down seat there that flips up and down. Sliding glass doors. We do have little medicine cabinet area here. Nice backsplash, solid surface counter. Three drawers and some storage space or trash can space there. The heavier duty porcelain foot flush toilet with the better lid. So it's not the cheap plastic lid that most porcelain toilets have. Some controls and little towel hooks and holders. And then you also have a little linen closet area here. Um, one thing I do tend to forget to mention, these have the little magnetic catches on them. And they're also soft closed hinges. So a little bit nicer hardware for your drawers and cabinet doors and stuff. Spinning around this way a little bit, we're stepping into the master bedroom area here. So we have a Camper King bed, and I say Camper King bed because they are smaller than a House King, typically found in an RV kind of thing. House King, if I remember right, is like 76 by 80. These type of Kings are usually 72 by 80, but there are some Camper Kings that are 70 inches or even as small as 66 inches wide. So depending on the brand, your King bed might be a little different than what you're expecting. Slide out wise here, we do have in the slide a window on each side right here. And those windows do actually open. They have day night roller shades on them as well. You also have electric outlet and USB charger port on each side. And then you have an area down here for some storage. Pretty much all vinyl floor up here in this section. Having these two opposing slide outs gives you quite a bit of room actually at the foot of your bed area right here. So the little closet entertainment slide over here 
That is an electric slide. We're going to close all this up again at the end of the video, show you what it looks like. But you have six dresser drawers there. You also have some storage space in there as well, a little cabinet space. Window over there does open. Another Jensen Smart TV. I'm just kind of looking up here at our ceiling area here. Again, you can see ductwork up here, recessed lighting up here, and those whisper quiet AC returns. Over here is the optional wall heater. It's an electric heater um, that basically allows you to kind of knock the chill off and warm up this bedroom area without having to worry about using your propane furnace as much. Again, you can get heat pumps on the air conditioners and stuff as well. And then you have that electric fireplace down there. Stackable washer dryer here. Currently using the Splendid brand. Uh, washer on bottom, dryer on top. We got quite a bit of storage back in here. Let's slide these mirrors closed here and open up the other side. Kind of see what this all looks like back in here. So you got some shelf space there, a lower closet rod, so you can hang some stuff down low, and then a high closet rod as well. Electric outlet in there. Then over here we have our Dyson rechargeable vac. The 30 amp Go Power solar charge controller, along with uh, some Wi Fi connectivity stuff here if you want to do that. An okay amount of room around the bed, but a ton of room here at the foot of the bed. You have your sliding door there to block off the bedroom area for privacy. But a really, really nice bedroom area here. Now going on back down here, I want to kind of just show you what it looks like. Again, all kind of closed up. So I opened up the three season door here just to kind of give you an idea. You know what that looks like all opened up so you got tons of room here to maneuver around do whatever you need to do we got that dinette back up out of the way the beds back out of the way we have the garage all closed up as well so you could kind of see what that looks like with your patio rails and everything all kind of folded up here and out of the way and then like that black rectangle there, that is an event that opens up. You've seen those when we were outside. So there's one of those down low and one up high. But overall, a very, very nice luxury toy haul or fifth wheel here. I want to head outside. I want to show you around the outside as well. So we're going to do that and then come back in and close it up. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, we are back on the outside of the brand new 2023 Riverstone 45 Bath Legacy Edition model here. And we're going to start here on the door side, kind of spin our way around. So first things up, again, Legacy Edition package gets you a really nice exterior paint job that you're seeing here. Now this paint is limited to their real toy hauler versions. So you're only going to find that on the 45 Bath. And they do have another model they are expected to be coming out with soon that will also have this paint job on it as well. Not available on the other Legacy Edition versions. They have their own four paint schemes you can choose from. So this particular unit was also ordered with optional slide-out awning covers. So that is a awning that rolls in and out above the slide room kind of see it up there and that also has a metal protective wrap so when the slide closes it kind of encases some of it in a wrap to kind of help protect it from uv rays also from you know tree branches and things that you might drive by and accidentally scrape across your awning material so it helps just kind of keep it from damaging those awnings that is also found on the main awnings as well so your big power awnings, this has two of them, you can see here, and they're both power, have LED light strips built in close to the body, adjustable arms for tilting, manual override in the front arm heads. 
but you also have that metal enclosure so when it's closed up it's helped just kind of protects it this also was ordered with the washer dryer feature you've seen that as well when we were inside and it has a vent out right up there the unit also was ordered with the four camera surround system here that has these little cameras one down each side and then it also has a camera above the entry door just above that light right there and another one on the back so you can see what's going on around your rv while you're driving down the road and there's also a little electric adapter you can buy aftermarket to plug in the screen inside the rv and then you could use it inside the camper so take it into your bedroom you know plug it in in there you hear something in the middle of the night you can pick up that screen see around your rv and you know just kind of know what's going on without having to get out of bed kind of cool behind the front baggage door right here is two 40 pound propane tanks with the auto changeover regulator just down below underneath of there is also a gas line hookup so you could plug yourself in like a little portable gas grill and do some outside cooking now going up here a little bit you can see there's an electric outlet right here and there's also a midship turn signal really nice safety feature here so when you're trying to get over people beside you know what's going on most rvs do not have that so i definitely like the fact that that is here and also that it is a big light as well so it's just kind of really bright led light at nighttime there's an electric outlet in here you have a large pass-through storage compartment here and you can kind of see up in here a lot of steel framework and stuff uh, nicely finished off but they have a much heavier duty chassis than a traditional rv and that is due to being able to be heavier and weight capacity wise along with just being a higher quality heavier duty built rv for example you can see this right here you can go to any rv open up the baggage door and see the thickness of the walls this is roughly a three and a quarter inch thick sidewall most rvs are two inches or inch and a half when it comes to their thickness of sidewall so you have an r16 insulated sidewall where again most rvs are pushing around an r7 to an r11 average of about an r9 for most fiberglass rvs but here you're getting an r16 sidewall so if you are that extended stay customer and you're looking for that you know colder weather camper or hotter weather camper that you're going to be out in some more extreme weather this is definitely going to hold in the heater ac better another thing to kind of mention here is going to be the rv entry doors you'll notice these look different than uh, the other brands or other models i guess you'd say on the riverstone lineup that they've had for the last few years they have now gone to the black glass entry door which has a window built in and it also has that lippert thin shade that you can pull down and block off the window that's in there but they went to a different door here recently you do have the more ride entry step here this step comes down touches the ground it's rated for 500 pounds this flips up inside the doorway it has a shock assist on it so you can kind of see it holding itself up there in the picture nice and easy to get up and down and store it away when you're traveling but again rated for 500 pounds so it's heavier duty to get you in and out of that rv large folding entry handle here as well just to help you get in and out they also have the model number sticker located right here and then your door handle right here is also a touch keypad as well you'll see a little advertisement there on the window talking about the multi-layer of clear coat on the outside of this thing very very nice sleek shiny finish to the rv triple axle unit so you have goodyear h-rated tires disc brakes instead of drums so that's another nice safety improvement uh, easy loop hubs 
And again, I harp on that 17 and a half inch tires. Most toy hauler fifth wheels in this range are usually 16 inch tires. So it's nice to have these larger tires. And again, Goodyear name brand as well. Just in between the axles there, you can see the Road Armor upgraded suspension piece here in the picture. That's kind of acts like shock absorber for your RV as it drives down the road. And that is standard on the RV. Now you can opt in for an upgraded more ride independent airbag suspension setup on these things. Really nice feature. If you're going to be more of a full timer, travel around the country kind of thing, you might consider it. But if you're just taking, you know, two or three trips and kind of sitting for long periods of time, not really doing a lot of long trips and traveling, this suspension does great as well. Uh, but they do offer the more ride as an optional upgrade. Back here in the back section, we have a quad entrance step going into our garage. And this is rated for 300 pounds. It's got the aluminum tread plate on there as well. And they do this style step on the back instead of the flip up step so that it doesn't interfere with any of your garage width for your toys. Large folding grab handle on the back here as well. And then you also have an electric outlet on the rear corner. But overall, a very beautiful exterior paint and stuff on this thing. Now on the back here, we have our patio system. You've seen that when we were inside. Here's kind of what it looks like from the ground. But we have the aluminum steps taking us up into that area with the handrail. There's also a support foot as well. The support foot is needed in large part due to the fact that they put the steps coming off the side instead of the back. So that cable has to be more toward the middle of the door instead of out further toward the end. So you do need that support foot when you have this out. Also has that rear awning. And again, that rear awning is kind of enclosed and cased when it's closed up. Has the LED light strip on there as well. They are also using the More Ride ramp door. Um, this ramp door, they call it a zero G gravity door, but basically it has a cable assist system that helps bring it up and down that doesn't make it feel so heavy. So it's just easier to take up and down for you. Uh, very nice setup there. If it doesn't get too dark, we might cut away to that and show you that as well here shortly. Running out of daylight here. So back here on the rear section, we have our powered power cord reel that comes out right here. This stretches out probably about 25 or 30 feet roughly. I don't have it all the way out. There is the gas fuel gauge right here along with two fuel tanks. So you got a tank for your generator and you also have a tank for your toys. Being that this is a real toy hauler set up the way they designed it, they were able to use a gasoline generator instead of just a propane generator like they use on their other ones that they don't want to put a gas tank under the bottom of. There is also an area, again, right there for your fuel tank or your fuel fill-up feature. Just kind of looking down here at the bottom, you can see two of your rear hydraulic stabilizer jacks, six-point auto-level jack system. Also, your dump hose holder is in here as well. Under here, you have your ice maker on off valve or low point water drain as well. Little overhead security light in case you got to come over here at night and do anything. Um, also on the back, I forgot to mention, there are two vents. One up high and one down low. Those vents are designed to allow for fumes to escape when you're traveling down the road if your toy has uh, gasoline in it. I think we're getting ready to get rained on here. Hopefully it don't last too long. All right, so up here we have our dump area 
along with the spare tire as well underneath of this section. Just in front of that rear axle there is also our fresh water tank drain. Inch and a half drain valve, so it will drain out faster for you than the little 3 8 versions on most RVs. I did forget to mention slide toppers on this side as well. Again, metal wrapped, uh, but there is not a slide topper on the uh, sofa slide uh, below the main awning. And that is due to the main awning could come down, hit those slide topper awnings and damage them. So damage either one of them really, damage the material mostly on the big one. So you will have, if you do the slide topper option, three rooms with toppers on them, not the fourth one. Furnace exhaust out right here. Again, midship turn signal. The Truma on-demand water heater here as well. And then we have our docking station area here. So we've got water filtration system here. Battery disconnect. There is our water inlet. And we can direct where the water goes by turning those colored valves right there. Outside utility shower, hot and cold with a detachable uh, little blue cable right there, little blue hose. Black tank flush is in here. Our three dump handles are in here as well. The other side of the pass-through storage compartment area right here. Just down inside of here is the hydraulic reservoir for the disc brakes. And you have your jack controls right here. And here we have the Go power, 1500 watt inverter, and just behind that is the water manifold system, also. Slam lock baggage doors. Back in behind this door, you have battery trays. Uh, you could fit four batteries in here, and they do slide out. You'll even notice as you go around the RV, thicker, better insulated baggage doors. Very, very important informational stickers here. I want to pop these up for you real quick. The first one popping up here is your main production data sticker. This right here has your VIN number on it, has your production date of the RV, has the axle sizes, and most importantly on this sticker, gross vehicle weight. That's the most you can load the RV up to. Axle weight, hitch weight, everything combined do not exceed that number. That right there is 24,000 pound gross weight on this one. This is one of a couple models they have that do go up to that weight limit. Most are only 21,000 pounds. Because of it being a 24,000 pounder, you can get like the Kurt Rotoflex pen box on it, but you can't get that trail air ride that most people are used to seeing or the Kurt air ride. That pen box is only rated for 21,000 pounds. So you'll see a little bit of difference between that pen box and also the regular Riverstone pen boxes when you're shopping and looking. All right, next sticker is the unloaded vehicle weight sticker here, basically telling you what the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line, and it also has the length on it as well. And last but not least, tire sticker here, telling you tire size, but most importantly here, cold tire pressure. Very, very important to remember to check your tire pressure. Again, you have a tire pressure monitoring system on this RV, so it's a lot easier for you to do. But if you don't check them, it'll be a lot easier for your tires to blow out and damage the RV. And that would be a bad thing on an expensive painted RV like this. Really cool front design here. LED light strips coming down each side along with one above your hitch there. Kind of looks nice here in the darker, cloudy, rainy night that we're going into here. Um, but yeah, it kind of stands out a little bit there. Just kind of a little close up of that hitch. And then looking down below here, you can see your generator if you do this feature. Again, they are using a gasoline generator on the toy hauler model. And this is the NPS 5500 watt. This is a really nice generator. XLR and some of the other stuff have been using this for a while in Trotta motorhomes and stuff. This, instead of being an own inversion, 
uh, different company, but it, the motor is powered by Yamaha, and it also has a remote start, and it uh, that's on a keychain, little key fob thing. But there's also a uh, uh, pull start in it as well. So if your battery was dead and you felt strong enough, you could come out here and try to pull start it. Down there is a hydraulic pump for some slide and auto level jack system control. That's where you would manually bring in those as well if you had to. Hopefully you never need to, but you can. And then there's actually a light up there as well. And then there's a panel on the side in there that opens up to access some wiring and things like that as well. But overall, a really, really nice, high quality, high end toy hauler fifth wheel here. Not much out on the market in this type of price range and quality range. Uh, so real quick, pop this up for you real quick, a picture of the roof. Very, very important to check out your roof from time to time. You can see things up here as far as you know, plumbing stack vents, ACs, um, TV antenna, attic vents, skylights, all kinds of little goodies up here. Very, very important to make sure you get up here from time to time again and inspect and check things out. All right, we're gonna head back inside. I want to close this thing up for you and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are back up inside the brand new 2023 Riverstone Legacy 45 bath model here. And I just wanna show you what it looks like closed up real quick. So when you are ready to close this thing up, you have to come right inside your main entry door here to your Firefly system. Um, just to kind of hit on this real quick, home screen has a master on off light button for almost every light in the RV. Tank readers, water pump, 12 volt heat pad button. If you have the generator feature, which most people probably will on the toy hauler, it has generator start stop built into it here. You also have a, a little digital voltmeter here. One of your ACs also on the home screen. You can go into your electric panel here, kind of see what's going on with the electric system. Click here, go through individual lights throughout the RV and outside as well. And remember the ones with the up and down arrows also have the uh, dimmer switches on them. And then you go into here, this one again, or legacy package. So you have three ACs. That third AC has a heat pump on it. And then you also have your traditional propane furnace as well. Then we come here to what we actually came in here for, the slide control buttons. And basically here we have color coded for each slide. We also have our two side power awnings on this screen as well. The rear power awning is in the back. But basically when you are ready to bring this thing in, we are going to push and hold the button. So we have bed slide and then we have electric uh, door side slide and that is basically the bedroom closet slide and then you got door side slide and off door side slide so three of our rooms are hydraulic the electric door side slide is obviously electric that's why they labeled it that way so let's go right here and kind of bring this in here see so we can stretch around and do this so you can kind of see what we got going on here so we're going to bring in the bed first very, very important when you bring in the bed, or actually any slide, very important to make sure your floor is clean. Things are out of the way. So that just rolls right in, pretty quick and easy. Now we're gonna do the electric slide as well. And they are currently using the Schwintec slide on the electric slide. Not sure if this will end up changing in the future. Some of the other Forest River brands have also been using this Schwintec and a Slimrack slide version. They're basically almost the same thing, but just a hair different, and they renamed them a little bit. But you can see when it is closed, you have enough room to squeeze in here, climb onto your bed. If you're going to you know, climb over the bed, get into your closet, or maybe lay in here, take a nap or something, you know, at a rest area overnight or whatever. 
but it is fairly snug. It closes up pretty tight. And there's still room to close off the sliding door there for privacy if you got guests with you as well. And when you're ready to go back out, you just hit the button. This one goes right on back out. Pretty simple. Then we're going to do the same thing with our bed slide. So when you're ready to take this back out. Now the bed slide is a little deeper than the closet slide. It just takes a few seconds to just bump it right on out as well. So pretty simple. Spinning on around here and looking at the downstairs. So just to hit on the fact that when all the slides are closed, you can still come in here and you can still get to your bathroom and get to your bedroom. So you don't have to worry about not being able to come in and use the bathroom in a rest area uh, or take a nap. Slide came in pretty quick and easy. So it gets pretty darn close here, especially at the refrigerator part. So again, very important just to make sure everything is snugged and tidied up. And then when you're ready to do your door side, same thing, hit the button. This comes in at a slight angle because it's a flush floor slide coming in over top of the main subfloor. This one is pretty quick and easy to run in and out as well. Again, all individual slide buttons. So when it is closed, it's pretty snug. You're not really climbing over unless you want to walk across your couch. But I guess you could if you really had to to get back there. But really just go through your garage door back there and you're into the rear part anyway. So you can get to some of your cabinets here. You could get to your microwave if you really needed to. But in order to open up the fridge or open up the oven, you would have to bump out the one room a little bit. And again, just takes a few seconds to bump it out. Nothing real major. You don't even have to go all the way out. We just bumped it out here just a few inches, giving us plenty of room to open the doors, load food and stuff into the refrigerator system if we wanted to. And going on the rest of the way back out. Again, just a friendly reminder here, be sure to check out the folks at Couches RV Nation. They are one of the largest internet discount dealers in the country and one of the largest, if not the largest, Riverstone selling dealer in the country. They will definitely save you a ton of money on a new RV if you're interested. Thanks again for taking the time to watch my RV videos. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe.